so we've made it to our harvest house in Jackson, Minnesota, and we are at Fort Belmont right now. The bugs are unreal here as far as hitting the windshield. So we actually took a Dawn foam that's for like dishes, and I sprayed that on and Tyler wiped it off and it worked really well until we got back on the road and the windshield was covered in bugs again. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll check out Fort Belmont a little bit and then we'll head to Sioux Falls. Wrapping up our stay at Fort Belmont, we had a great time. We got to walk the grounds this morning. This doesn't actually open until 10, it's only about 7.30, so we're gonna hit the road. Definitely recommend stopping here, especially for Harvest Hosts, because it was a great stay and the sunrise was beautiful. And there's some really awesome 1800 replica buildings that you can walk around and check out, which we found really cool. We'll see you in Sioux Falls. So we are in Falls Park and behind us, you can see some of the waterfalls. What's really cool about this is it's just a natural formation in the middle of the biggest city in South Dakota. seat in the house just facing the waterfall right now. What we learned is that this glacier used to be one mile thick over 14,000 years ago. As it was melting and making its way south it split in two and ultimately led to where we're sitting right now. Behind us is the Queen Bee Mill, which was a bustling mill in 1880. It actually produced 1,200 bags of flour every single day, which is four times the typical amount of a typical Midwest mill. It actually didn't have enough water power or wheat to supply it, and it did close down after just two short years. And then in 1956, unfortunately, it did burn down. It was a seven-story building back in the day, and this is what's left of it behind us. We are here on a Monday at the end of August. There's a still a good amount of people here, but it's not overly crowded. The weather is beautiful. It's getting a little warmer. It's just before the afternoon, so it's a good time to come. We thought this being the biggest city in South Dakota, we have to drive our van everywhere to get back and forth, but we just found this map and it says it's a 2.45 mile loop of the whole Sioux Falls Trail. So it looks like everything's pretty much in walking distance. Sioux Falls is like the northern tip of this trail. We're just gonna try to hoof it for the rest of the day and see how far we get. We're heading up the scenic overlook tower overlooking Sioux Falls Park told Hope if we take the stairs instead of the elevator, I'll get her an ice cream, so. The stairs we're taking. A deal's a deal. So we are at the lookout tower right now. It wasn't too bad to come up, worth it to take the stairs to get the ice cream, but it's got awesome views, so definitely make sure. It's free to do the tower. You just walk up like three flights of stairs. Of course, there is an elevator, but look at that view. It's actually quite windy here today. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll see that we had a lot of issues with wind and microphone difficulties. Um, right now I have a Shure MV88 microphone plugged into my iPhone with a Rycote Windjammer sock on it, and so far so good. So the mural right behind me, a lot of people have a hard time finding. We actually met a couple who were driving around for like half an hour trying to find it. So if you look at you can see the arc right behind me on top of it and then across the street is the Orpheum Theater and the theater is located at 300 North Phillips Street. So we're in town now and there is parking and it's metered. We left the van over by Sioux Falls and just walked here. It's honestly probably a three minute walk so totally worth it to not try to park the van on the street. Behind us is the Arches of Dreams and this is crafted of 60 tons of stainless steel and it spans nearly 295 feet which is almost as long as a football field. And there's a little break in the arc as well, and that actually represents the leap of faith it takes to make dreams come true. And that, you can see, is right there. And one cool thing we learned too, talking to a local, is that the Queen Bee Mill, the reason it closed down is because 
when they went to sell it, the owner actually dammed up the river behind it. And when all the investors showed up to buy it, he took the dam out and the water started flowing like crazy. So it looked like it was a very powerful, fast moving river. Obviously after a couple of days, it slowed down quite a bit. So that's why it closed on for two years. Little known fact provided by a local native of Sioux Falls. theater is behind us. They always play a different movie. So if we were staying longer, we'd probably see Rocky because obviously Tyler's a fan. Walking through the downtown area right now, there's tons of cute shops, restaurants, bars, and there's some breweries, and even found a spice and tea exchange, which we have in Mystic. And if you haven't watched our Mystic video, we'll link it above. As you're walking through downtown, they have a bunch of sculptures. They change every year, so it's gonna be different when you come maybe, but it's super cool. Right now they have 80, and this is the 19th exhibition of doing the sculpture walk. And they do have these little brochures that you can get. You can vote on them. And they have some ones from prior years that were best in show that they still have around that you can find. So it's pretty cool, because as you're walking, you get to stop and look at something cool. Finished up a really good meal here at Mackenzie River. We split a turkey bacon ciabatta and a pulled pork sandwich and then also a beet salad. Really good, amazing food here. As always, there's always room for dessert. So we're gonna check out the B&G Milkway, which a local had told us we cannot leave town without checking out. So that's next on our list. For that, a few things left to explore. We stopped at a world pastry champion French bakery called Siege Patisserie. It reminded us of the bake shop we have in Mystic, Connecticut, Sift, which is owned by Adam Young, who won America's Best Baker on the Food Network. So we had to step in and try their macarons. We just went to Siege Patisserie. We got some macarons. I got coffee. They put it in a martini shaker and actually shook it. So we just did French. Now we're going to go show you something. Italian. Next, we visited the brass replica of the David sculpture by Michelangelo, which was donated to Sioux Falls. The artist sculpted his hands disproportionately big to symbolize his power. This place is very dog friendly too. If you didn't see our recent video about why we couldn't take Kip with us cross country, we'll link to it above. But we've seen a lot of dogs around this place and a lot of restaurants that actually say dogs are. That is a wrap on our day in Sioux Falls today. Definitely a lot of fun. This ice cream is going to be delicious because it's 91 degrees now. It's about a mile and a half from the downtown area. We're going to finish this off. I got an avalanche monster cookie, which is kind of like a blizzard. And I got a classic vanilla chocolate twist. The woman that told us to come here that's a local, she said to get the strawberry, but I panicked and I got my usual. So if you come, get the strawberry and let us know how it was. Next up, Porter Sculpture Park. Cheers.